The Batman Arkham games are known for their extreme detail and depth, and the gameplay throughout the series is no exception to that. There are so many cool hidden mechanics, attacks, and more that go completely unnoticed by the majority of players simply because Rocksteady never mentions them, instead leaving it up to us to discover. So I've decided to compile 10 of these hidden gameplay features into one large list. These will be ranked in order of usefulness, so as we make our way down the list, every obscure mechanic gets more and more helpful for you to use as the player. So let's get started. Kicking it off at number 10 is the Arkham game's really unique version of a cinematic mode called Action Shots. When using a gadget, do the same thing you normally would and use the left trigger to pull out the gadget you have selected. However, instead of using the right trigger to activate the gadget, use the right button. Now, when Batman uses the gadget, it will completely change the camera angle to a much more cinematic style. For example, if we were to try this out with Nightwing's Escrima Sticks, the new camera angle will essentially follow the gadget around, allowing you to watch its entire path as it knocks over over tons of enemies. But wait, this isn't just for gadgets because there's actually multiple variations of this cinematic mode for other aspects of Batman's moveset as well. Let's say you're grappling around on the gargoyles in a predator section. Well, when you're in this grappling motion, simply tap the right trigger and the camera will change to this awesome angle while you're swinging around. Alternatively, you can also turn Batman's glide kick into an action shot too. While you're perched on top of a vantage point, all you have to do is rotate your joystick clockwise two or three times and then go in for the glide kick. Now you get to see the full attack from an inmate's perspective, slowly watching Batman glide closer and closer until eventually slamming into him. The one action shot that surpasses all of the rest though is the line launcher, because it has one surprising feature that the others don't. If you chain an attack after using the cinematic line launcher, you'll actually stay in cinematic mode throughout the duration of the entire attack. That means you can use something like a fear takedown after line launching and have this amazing camera angle while doing it. The closest thing to this is the bat claw because you can chain the slam attack after an action shot, but let's be honest, it's not nearly as cool as the line launchers for your takedown. Unfortunately, not all gadgets have access to action shots, but the ones that do make these games even more fun to play and mess around in. Coming in at number 9, we have the attack that actually allows you to beat up thugs even more after they've already been knocked unconscious. I'm sure most of you out there already know about this move that allows you to pick up enemies while they're on the ground. After hitting the right trigger and the cape stun button, Batman will grab a downed thug and pull him back onto his feet, leaving him completely stunned right in front of you for something like a beatdown. Now that's cool and all, but the best part about it is that if you use this exact same button combination on an enemy that's already been completely knocked out, Batman will actually pick up their body and slam them right back on the ground. An extremely brutal move that doesn't have that much use in combat because obviously you're attacking a knocked out thug, but one thing's for certain, the attack looks so cool and it was a really nice addition to the game. Number 8 is a mechanic that I discovered a couple of years back, and I'd go as far to say that I might be the first person to ever find it, because it is so dumb that I don't think anyone else would even try to do this in game. If you use your bat claw on an enemy that's near a ledge or railing, Batman will pull them over the ledge and knock them out, right? Well, what you probably don't know is that if you throw Batman's freeze grenade at the thug while he's in this falling motion, the ice will actually act as a shield and completely break his fall. An enemy can fall from any height, no matter how high and you can instantly give him protection and keep him from going unconscious. Now this mechanic will more than likely end up hurting you in a predator encounter for obvious reasons, but if you want to play as a more lore accurate Batman that doesn't just leave enemies completely helpless while they fall from great heights with no protection whatsoever, then there you go. A little bit of a bonus mechanic, but I also want to mention that if the thug falls into something like a railing when the freeze blast explodes, it will actually freeze him to that railing and he'll be completely stuck to it until the ice eventually breaks apart. At number 7, we have the Batmobile in Arkham Knight. Now, there's actually three different ways to call the Batmobile to your character in this game, each with a slightly different effect. If you just simply tap the button that calls the Batmobile, when the car gets to you, it will do a little 180 drift while Batman automatically hops in. Now, this is great if you want to go the opposite direction, but it can be kind of annoying because it completely kills all of the Batmobile's speed, and if you don't want to actually go that way, you have to manually turn the car back around before driving off. Hence, option 2, where if you call the Batmobile while you're running forward with your character, the Batmobile will keep going in that same direction when you get into the car without losing any of its speed. It's just an instant transition from on foot to Batmobile, which is really nice. And finally, that brings us to option 3. If you hold the button down rather than just tap it once, the Batmobile will still drive to Batman. However, Batman won't actually hop in like usual. Instead, the car will just come to your location and immediately stop so you can get in manually whenever you want. This is great if you're in the middle of some 
some hand-to-hand -hand combat and want to bring in the Batmobile for some environmental takedowns, but don't want to completely cheese the fight by hopping in your car and running everyone over. Oh yeah, there's also the fact that the car will downright avoid making contact with any thugs no matter what if you hold the button in, so there's that too. Number 6. Interactable Objects in Combos Remember these Joker chattering teeth that you have to use your batarangs to destroy? Well, breakable objects like these can actually be used to your advantage in the middle of a fight. There's a lot of combat encounters that have things like tiger cameras, freezable pipes, and more in the same general area. Now, if you destroy or interact with these things while you have a combo, it will not only keep your combo going, but will actually increase it. It's crazy to think that interacting with something completely or relevant to the fight will still keep your combo, much less end up benefiting you. In hindsight, it makes sense because thugs can throw fire extinguishers and canisters at you in combat, which share similar properties with the other interactable objects, and it wouldn't be fair for you to lose your combo by destroying them. But I still think it's cool how you can multitask side missions by breaking network relays, destroy tiger cameras that are scattered around Arkham City, and so much more, all while in the middle of a combat encounter and having it build up your combo nonetheless. Coming in at number 5 is the Directed Aerial Attack. Now this attack in itself is pretty obscure, but it also has even more hidden aspects to it on top of that. When doing an aerial attack, simply aim your joystick and press the attack button, which will make Batman leap off the original stunned enemy and land on a completely different thug. This is great to use if you're about to get hit by an enemy in the middle of your attack and need to jump out of the way to create some distance. Now this specific version of the aerial attack is, to my knowledge, only mentioned one time throughout the entire Arkham series but this other aspect to it isn't mentioned at all. You see, normally you're not able to perform aerial attacks on larger enemies like Mr. Hammer, Sickle, or Enforcers. However, if you use the directed aerial attack to target them instead, you will in fact be able to attack them mid-air, which plays this really cool attack animation. Do this a few times, and they'll be knocked completely unconscious. These larger enemies can do a lot of damage up close, so having a move like this that allows you to attack them from a pretty big distance is really great to have. At number 4 is the ground takedown cancel that works in both Arkham City and Arkham Origins. Have you ever attempted to do a ground takedown in combat, timed it wrong, and then got completely stuck in this animation while an enemy's attacking you? Don't lie, I know you have. Well, no more, because this glitch, mechanic, or whatever you want to call it allows you to cancel the animation before it finishes and still take out the enemy on the ground at the same time. While doing a ground takedown, simply spam your quickfire back claw in any direction. This will instantly finish the takedown animation and you now have complete control over Batman again. You can not only escape the ground takedown by doing this, but also easily transition into a bat claw slam, allowing you to get an even more damage on a completely different thug when you realistically shouldn't even have control over your character at this point. And that's all there is to it, probably one of the easiest glitches to exploit with a massive benefit to it as well. However, do take note that even though the thug on the ground will be knocked unconscious, since you cancelled out of the animation, the ground takedown won't count towards your combo. As we now enter into the top 3 most useful mechanics, the ability to hack Cobra Tanks is in at third. On my first playthrough of Arkham Knight, these Cobra Tanks gave me quite a lot of trouble, and I know I'm not the only one either because there are so many people online that have complained about them. However, if you use this simple trick, I'm not even gonna lie to you, Cobra Tanks might actually be the easiest part of the game. Once you unlock the drone hack upgrade for the Batmobile, which you should have by the time Cobra Tanks are introduced, all you have to do is hold in the counter button to automatically turn an enemy Cobra Tank onto your side. You do have to use two secondary weapon charges, but considering every destroyed Cobra Tank gives you one full bar, that shouldn't be a problem. Now that you have an allied Cobra Tank on your side, it will draw the attention of multiple other enemies onto it, and this thing is is beefy. It has so much health that you really don't even have to worry about it getting destroyed. Now your only job is to circle around all of the distracted Cobra tanks and take each one out while they're focused on your ally. Sometimes they may occasionally shift their fire onto you if you're spotted, but all you have to do in this case is drive out of sight, let them shift their attention back onto your ally, and come back immediately after. It's essentially a decoy that lures in nearby enemies, tanks all of their shots for you while also fighting back, and acts as a distraction so you can easily move behind the Cobras and take them out. Out. It seems kind of obvious for a hidden mechanic, but Rocksteady never mentions that you can use the Batmobile's secondary weapons on Cobra Tanks, and I'm not even surprised either because it is just so overpowered. 
In at number 2 is the Wreck Gun. If you watched my short on this, you'd know that the Wreck Gun has a ton of secret and unique features depending on how you're using it, and there's even more on top of the 5 I listed in that video. So buckle up, cause we're about to go through all of them. Obviously, when you use the Wreck on an armed enemy, it will cause them to involuntarily shoot their weapon, right? So what you can actually do is disrupt their gun twice, and since this causes the enemy's weapon to explode as soon as they shoot, all you have to do is use the Wreck Gun on them for an instant knockout. Normally, you'd have to get yourself spotted for the disruptor to do its job, but this strategy lets you take out two different enemies in Predator without ever leaving your vantage point. Alternatively, if you use the wreck gun on armored, stun baton, or electrical charged enemies, it will actually send them flying back, knocking not only themselves over, but also anyone behind them. If used enough times, this will eventually knock out a thug completely, so yeah, very helpful for you to use as the player. The wreck gun can also be used on detective mode jammers, thermal scanners, drones, and tiger helicopters, which will briefly disable their respective abilities. This is by far the most useful to use on the jammers though, because it gives you access to detective mode and predator for a good amount of time without ever having to take out the thug with the jammer pack. Although, the other ones do have some pretty cool effects too though. Did we hit something? And of course, let's not forget to mention that if you use the wreck gun on Solomon Grundy, instead of doing any damage, it will actually heal him. This was such a cool little mechanic put into the game that does make a ton of sense considering how Solomon Grundy is powered through electricity in the boss fight, but again, I don't think anyone was expecting Rock City to go this far into detail. Truly amazing. And finally, the last hidden feature of the wreck gun is its range. Now, once you're a certain distance away from an enemy, the wreck gun won't lock on automatically, which leaves most players thinking that they can't actually hit them with the wreck gun from that distance. However, what most of you don't know is that the electricity fired from the wreck gun is actually infinite and will keep going forever until it hits something. You know what that means? As long as you have good aim and lead thugs correctly, you can actually use the wreck gun as a sniper. Despite literally every other attack and gadget in Batman's arsenal having a capped range, you can still hit enemies with the wreck gun no matter how far away you are from them. I'm sure there's even more mechanics within the wreck gun that I've completely missed just because it has so many unique and different uses. It's honestly the most underrated gadget in the entire Arkham series if you ask me. And now. At number 1, and in my opinion the most useful hidden attack in the entire Arkham series, is the secret drop attack in Arkham Knight. I'm sure you're all very familiar with the regular drop attack because it's one of the core parts of Batman's moveset, but what if I told you that a certain button combination would turn this drop attack into something completely different and much more powerful? When starting off your drop attack, do the same thing you normally would for a regular drop attack and start the motion. However, right as you're about to land on an enemy while falling, double tap your punch button. This will change Batman's regular drop attack animation into a massive punch to the enemy's face. Not only does it look really cool, but trust me this attack is a lot more than just an animation change. Notice how all four of these enemies are carrying guns, right? Well, after using this attack, the shock radius of the punch actually causes all of them to drop their weapons. There were literally four gunmen here, and they were all completely disarmed with just one attack in a split second. It's absolutely insane. I have noticed that the disarm is slightly inconsistent at times, but when it does work, it's no doubt one of the most powerful attacks in Batman's arsenal. Now, even if the shock radius didn't cause enemies to drop their weapons, it would still be completely worth using due to the sheer damage this punch truly does. On all regular enemies, doing this special drop attack punch will completely knock out a thug in just two hits. All you have to do is use this attack twice, and it's an instant KO. For reference, the regular drop attack will never knock out a thug no matter how many times you use it, much less in two hits. So yeah, there is literally no point to using the normal variation of the drop attack. The punch version is superior in literally every way. And that just about concludes our top 10 list, and even though this video is over, I still have a lot more hidden mechanics in the Arkham series to share with you guys, so I'll see you next time.